Hey there, Shooby Doodlers. How are you doing? Uh, today, I thought I'd talk about political correctness, which I suppose is um, the forerunner of wokeness today, which is a word that kind of really upsets some people. So way, way back, and this will be about 1986, probably something like that. Um, and I was a young wannabe illustrator, and I didn't know anything about all this. I was... Looking back, I kind of feel that I had lived a very sheltered kind of life. Uh, but looking back now, I can see that other people would see that quite differently. Some people would probably say I'd had a very privileged upbringing, which um, from certain points of view, I probably had, but it's all very relative, isn't it? However, I was sort of imbued uh, with attitudes which had been uh, sort of given to me from parents, school, environment, whatever, friends. And I found myself sitting on my own thinking, I need to come up with ideas for books because I need to earn a living. And I'd done some pop-up books and I'd been sent uh, these little dummies of board books for children. And I thought, oh, maybe I could do uh, something in there. And I need a character. So I came up with Clumsy Clot. I'm going to read these to you and I'll be back in a minute. Well, these are the two little books I made. And I think maybe I got excited that I got sent these dummies of um, these board books. I thought, oh, what can I do with that? And this character popped into my head. So uh, what do we have? I think this was maybe first. So this is called Clumsy Clot. Hmm. And <laughs> so here we have, it's a pop-up, you see. Look out, Clumsy, mind that rock. And there's a little rock. He's gonna hit that rock, isn't he? You know it, you know it. Oh, going up in the air. So he's near a rubbish tip or something. Um, and this is not intended as a finished book. This was um, a kind of a, a, a very rough idea to show. Oh, what about this character? What, you know, maybe we could do something with this. Oh no, he's in the bin. So he's landed in the bin. And it's showing, you know, what you could do with pop-ups, I think. Yeah. Oops, coming down. I don't know how he's, oh, he's just rolling down. He should be rolling down the, anyway. Look out, oh no. There's a greenhouse, there's a green, <laughs> greenhouse. I think I've used that quite a few times in books. Um, and here's the, the green, oh yeah. No, I'm quite pleased with that. Look, look, can you see the little hand poking out of the greenhouse there? <laughs> so that's quite fun. Uh, crash, bang, tinkle, tinkle. That's funny, the gardener is shouting. Why would he be doing that? <laughs> Uh, off with you, clumsy clot. Kicking him up the behind. Yeah, it's pretty cruel, isn't it? <laughs> it's not what we do today. Well, not what we did then. Um, here's another one. So this clumsy clot. Uh, so this is trying to do a bit of rhyming here. Mind the cat, clumsy clot. Oh, dear, he's tripped over the cat. Tea or coffee all over the place. Shake the pen, see the block. Well, of course, that wouldn't work now because children wouldn't know what an earth a pen was. <laughs> Careful, don't fall in the water. <clears throat> Danger, no swimming. Oops, there's going to be trouble. Um, one is longer, one is shorter. So he's kind of, you know, fallen in the mud or something there, hasn't he? And so it's kind of a... I think I was more interested in the character and the ability to do <laughs> to do pop-ups. But if you haven't already, hit the subscribe button and ring the bell so you get notified every time I upload new videos to help you improve your creative skills. Indeed, make, do make sure you're subscribed because I'm going to be doing lots more uh, about the business of children's books. So Clumsy Clot, I worked away at these. You can see there's quite a bit of work gone into them and they're... They're very much a, a discussion point. They're not kind of finished stories just to get and say, hey, what do you think of this idea? You know, shall I work on it? And, and my dear editor kind of was a little silent for a moment and kind of read through. I said, well, you know, we don't really do books like that. I said, oh, why not? She said, well, 
have you ever heard of dyspraxia? No. So she told me about dyspraxia and how, well, from the outside to the uninitiated, they just seem clumsy and sort of falling about, but it's something that they can't help. And what might appear clumsy, people can't help. Um, and she said, that it's, it's, by doing that, she explained, it's kind of a little bit like bullying. And, <gasps> and I thought, oops, I'd never thought about that. And and I went home and and it really kind of got to me and, and made me think of all sorts of situations in the past and thought, oh dear, maybe I misunderstood that situation. Maybe I was unknowingly really unkind in things I have said in the past and all sorts of things like that. Uh, and it, it made me really think about it. So... I think from that day, when I've been writing children's books, I've always had that in mind. And in the, oh, probably in the 2000s, early 2000s, there was a great big kind of hoo-ha about political correctness. So some people got very angry about political correctness. I want to say what I like. I have a right to say what I like. And you do have a right to say what you like, but you've got to appreciate that you're probably upsetting other people, even though you might not know it and you might not have any conception of why they might be upset with what you say. But the th fire engines, but the thing is to realise, to empathise and realise that everybody has got their own thing going on. Over the years, I've really been thinking about it and, and everybody has got something. There is nothing <laughs> normal. <laughs> there is no such thing as normal. And and I've done an awful lot of sort of self-searching myself and discovered lots of things about myself. Um, and it, 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 <laughs> it took me, I don't know, probably until my 40s before I went, oh, maybe. I'm dyslexic. In fact, it was a, a conversation I had with a librarian one day and I was saying about all oh, this and that and this and that. She said, mm, I think you can read this book. <laughs> and it was like, oh, uh, oh, I see. <laughs> it's not just me. This is a thing. I didn't get upset about it. I thought, oh, how do I get around this? And I got around it doing more reading, more writing and, and just immersing myself, I think, in... in in language much more um, and being aware that I do strange things and making the best of it so quite often I will misread things very <laughs> very badly but quite funnily and out of it will come a, a story or a character or something like that so political correctness and, and wokeness that we have now I think wokeness is like um, political correctness on steroids and I think political correctness was sort of pointing out, you know, we don't do that, we don't say that, and to make you go off and have a little think about it. But I think wokeness has maybe got a bit more um, revolutionary, a bit more out on the streets, I think. People have now split into so many tiny little factions of difference. It's very hard to know what you can and can't say. So... Uh, very, very often over my long career of children's books, I've had people say, don't you feel you're being censored uh, by, you know, publishers and you know, whatever and things you're not allowed to say. <laughs> and, and I have never felt that at all. Uh, I, I think sometimes there have been um, grammar things uh, and meaning things. I've had conversations with pub uh, publishers and editors about and... Um, but but never never about deep things like that. There'd be one or two. No, there have been one or two, and 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 just have conversations about it and and uh, come to an agreement. Often, uh, it's uh, you know I I explain why I have put something in, and they go, oh all right, okay, that's that's okay. But they want to know where where it's coming from, I think. And then sometimes they go, no, we really can't do this. And uh, but I don't think I've ever actually got that far that anybody's really said we can't do this because the lawyers say or whatever because I've been self-censoring along the way and I think that's what most children's authors do because on the whole we don't write books for children to upset them we write books to make them think in which case 
waving red rags is is not the way to do it. Um, I think if you know as soon as you sort of do anything blatant, you start preaching to children in books, they turn off and they're not interested. They're not going to buy it. If you do have a message that you want to put across um, in the children's books, you have to do it really subtly and you have to get it into the story. And it's all about stories and um, engaging children in something that is going to take them in. And so once they've finished hearing or reading the story, they go, oh, I wonder what that was about and leave them with something to think about. It doesn't always work. So, you know, sometimes children will get complete opposite um, end of the message you're trying to get across. But then that's maybe the way they think, or it's maybe you haven't got your message right. So, so it's it's really all about writing really good stories, and not um, trying to preach and not trying to convert. As I say, if you do have something that you really want to say, you have to be really subtle about it. And that's not censorship. That is craft. Thanks for watching and make sure you are subscribed to the Shoe Rainer Drawing channel where I'm going to be doing lots more stuff about children's books and publishing. And in the meantime, keep drawing, writing, illustrating, whatever. And I'll see you next time. You take care now. Bye bye.